Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, the most famous YouTuber in the world that no one has ever heard of. Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, we are working on the Speedster project today. I know it doesn't look like it, but uh, I need to cut out two plywood discs to get back into this. I am determined to clean up this intake and make it usable. So right now I'm setting up the machine to cut out the discs and uh, I do apologize. The audio for this the last three days of my work is gone. Um, apparently I had the camera set to fast motion silent movie mode, which I did not know it had. So I am stuck behind the computer narrating and uh, trying to explain what I'm doing over me silently explaining what I'm doing. So we're going to fast forward through this clip real quick. We're going to get the, the uh, discs cut out. Disc. Blech. Tripping on my tongue too. We'll get them cut out and then I will show you what I did with them, or uh, from your perspective, what I'm about to do with them. So buckle up. I'm going to put some music on in the background to kill the silent spots, but um, unfortunately it's me talking to the computer in this video. It's not the format that I wanted, but it is what it is, and let's move on. Okay, we've got the disc cut out, uh, there's a little dimple in the middle, and a hole in the middle, and it didn't cut all the way through, so I had to use the bandsaw. Now, on to the good stuff. Here's the intake manifold. After we've run it through vinegar and all that in the past episodes, and I cut a little Cut a little circle in the middle of that, just scored it so that sanding disc could fit on there. Right now I'm doing the top piece. As you can see, screwing it in straight through into the table. So I had to grind those off. We'll get to that part. But there I am aligning that up with the scored circle in the middle and the tiny hole. There it is. I explained all this brilliantly on camera. Obviously, I am screwing the sanding pad to the bucket, which the reason being is I needed something to put in the chuck on the lathe, which we're going to get to in a minute. Uh, here's where I screw the uh, Use an inch, one inch screws, and I went straight through and into the table. Didn't have any shorter screws, and honestly, I didn't even think it was going to go through. I thought they were short enough, but yeah, screwed it right to the work table. That wasn't going nowhere. Now I've got it out. I'm running the screws back out. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know how well received this video is going to be because I feel pretty foolish sitting here narrating it. Um, good thing about drywall screws is they snap off. Apparently I was very proud of my drywall screw tips. Here's where the monkey struggles with the strap on the bucket. I 
Okay, I think I'm going to skip ahead here. You get the idea. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to cut it here and uh, we're going to move on to the next step because it's probably boring. Okay, we're back. We've got the intake manifold there. I'm just using the grinder to chop down those little stubs. Uh, those will tear you up quick. We're just about to get into the meat of it. Okay, yeah, I'm very proud of that too. Okay, now, here I'm testing the bucket's empty. And I'm just testing my theory to see if proof of concept and all. Okay, I got my sand out, which I thought was Black Beauty, but it wasn't. It's just uh, playground sand, but I think that's probably best for this because aluminum's a little bit of soft metal. And I've never done this before. So we are going to put the part in the bucket. We're going to put the sand in the bucket. Here I am, Andy Warhauling a, uh, a bunch of sand. And I want to do the inside too, so we got to get it in the inside. And in it goes. Now I'm aiming for about half a bucket here because I want the sand to be able to move around. Pop that on. I did have to do quite a bit of trimming to get that to fit on my lathe, but um, it went on. And before you ream me, yep, keys in the truck, I know. I know. Getting everything lined up. That's uh, I had to roll that tailstock out about six inches to get the bucket to clear to go in. There's my makeshift sh uh, switch because the original circuitry on the King of China or whatever the hell lathe this is got fried. I didn't know how to fix it, so I had somebody come up and wire the motor through that switch. And it won't go in reverse anymore, but it does the job. Okay, this is my first check. Let's see what happened, see if there's any improvement. And there's sand between the lid and the plywood, which is a mystery. The plugs in, I have no idea how it got there. But it did. Okay, these, the um, outside is way cleaner than it was. Uh, the inside, not so much. So we're going to stick it back in again. Uh, I had put that off camera, I had put that cardboard in there to, to ease some of the clunking on the bucket because in the lathe it was, it was turning and if there was sound you'd hear it, it was going clunk, clunk, clunk and slamming into the bucket and scraping. So I put the cardboard in there to help that. Here I am wrestling with my buffing wheel with the intention of polishing it. which you're about to see is, uh, didn't, didn't really turn out all that well. All right, I think we're gonna skip it here too. Uh, let's, let's skip ahead a little bit because uh, I go at this for, for a little, little while, so hang on. Right, here we are with the quote unquote buffed what I'm pointing out in, in there is there are casting defects inside this in addition to the aluminum oxide. And there is the part that I spent so much time polishing and uh, in that process I noticed that there was a bunch of scratches and, and there's some really deep digs in that that I was never going to get out. So I decided to go with option B. There you can see the, some of the scratches. This, this thing's been through the wars. Option B would be a product from Seymour, I think. Yeah, Seymour P2000. 
paint. It's aluminum blast. This is really, really good stuff. Uh, I use cast blast on the exhaust manifolds and they, they hold up for years, years and years. Normally I paint these black, but given that it was aluminum, I decided that I wanted to go with aluminum paint on this one. And this paint doesn't come off. Um, other aluminum paints, you, you put your hand on it afterwards and you come away silver. Uh, looking like the Tin Man and the Wizard of Oz, but th this this doesn't. Uh, this this is really high quality paint, and I recommend it even uh, if they aren't paying me to say so. So there's our finished product. Um, I shot this this morning. Uh, it looks very very nice. Uh, here I am discovering some numbers on it that I spoke so that I would be able to look it up, but now I'm going to have to go back out to the shop grab it bring it in because the audio is gone and I'm reading the numbers to you there in the, in the, uh, in the film that is playing at times two speed straight out of the camera but I think it looks nice I think it looks nice oh and the reason the reason that I chose this manifold uh, let me stick a little insert in here and then I'll come back with the audio okay so we've got the um, the uh, flow rating. This was out of a magazine from 1996. As you can see, the original dog leg, uh, 1909 to 1911, original dog leg flows 52.62 CFM, which is the reason that I chose it over the 20 or so cast iron um, manifolds I have in there because they only flow in the 40s. And this one has a, a little bit more of a performance boost to it. Than the other ones uh, so there's my secret and there is the finished product so there you have it thanks for watching hopefully the next one will be better and yeah we're gonna get this car built it might take a while we're gonna get it done and um, I appreciate you hanging with me and uh, we'll see you in the next one.